Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient in Python. We're going to be using popular libraries like NumPy, SciPy, as well as Python Pandas to go through three different examples. One is a manual calculation, one uses SciPy, and the third uses Python Pandas with ordinal data. But before we jump into the Python coding side of things, I want to go over a little bit more information about the Spearman's rank correlation, as well as going through a manual example step by step. All right, so let's take a look at Spearman's rank correlation. So first, this measures the monotonic relationship between two variables. This means that it detects whether one variable consistently increases or decreases as the other increases, even if the relationship is not linear. Remember, Pearson's looks at linear relationships, right? So Spearman will work with ranks instead of raw data, and it can be used also with ordinal data and you can think of this as where like variables are ranked. Like you can imagine like a test grade, right? A, B, C, D, F. Uh, the correlation is called the Spearman's row and it ranges between negative one and one. So a one is gonna be considered a perfect positive correlation, zero, no correlation, and negative one is a perfect negative correlation. You can see on the screen, a few different ranges over here between zero, zero, one, no correlation, one to three low, three to five medium, five to seven high, and seven to one is very high. So you want to use the Pearson's correlation when the relationship is linear and both variables are continuous and normally distributed. And you would use the Spearman's correlation when the relationship is monotonic. Um, it doesn't always have to be linear. And when working with ordinal data or when there are outliers that might distort the results of a Pearson correlation. Again, we're using rank so um, outliers aren't going to have as much as an impact. So here's how you calculate your Spearman's rank correlation. Number one is you rank the data, both variables. Two, calculate the differences between the ranks, square the differences in sum, and then plug the numbers into the formula, uh, which is right over here to the right. Uh, D is the number difference D is the difference between the ranks of each observation, and N is the number of observations. So let's say we have person A, B, C, D, and E, and then we have the experience over here, two, five, seven, 10, and 12, and then the salary associated. We can say this is thousands, right? So let's take a look at maybe a possible data analyst salary. So first person's at 55K, second at 85K, third 100K, fourth 145K, and fifth 125K. So here's how we built this out. So first we have the experience, right? So Two is first, second, five is two, seven is three, 10 is four, and 12 is five, right? And then our salary, one, two, three. And then since 145 is greater than 125, that gets ranked five, and then 125 gets four. Next, what we're gonna do is find the difference. So you can see one and one between experience and salary. There's no difference, right? Squaring it, no difference as well. 2, 2, 3, 3. Then we have 4 and 5 and 5 and 4. Well, both of those are going to be off a little bit. One's negative 1, one's positive 1. So square those and we have 1 each and then sum them up 2. Now we just plug everything back into the formula, right? Our difference is going to be 2 and then also our n is going to be 5, right? So we plug this in over here. We'd say 1 minus 6 times 2, right? So we have 12 on this side of things and then we have divided by five squared minus one times five. So we have one minus 12 over 120, 0 0.9, which is considered a very high correlation. So with that out of the way, I think we are ready to go and start coding. So make sure to you grab your notebook and uh, let's go over some examples. All right, so to get started, we're gonna have to import NumPy, SciPy, and Pandas. So import NumPy as NP, then import pandas as pd and then from scipy we're going to be importing in stats so import stats and these should be the only three imports that we need or dependencies in this video and we should be able to get going so what we're going to do for, for our first example i'll say example one is going to be a manual calculation so manual calculation and let's get going on that side of things so I'm going to do a baseball example. So we're going to have something called hits and we're going to say np.array and then pass in some values over here. 
Our first value is going to be 150, then we're going to have 180, then 120, then 210, and then 160. Next, we're going to have uh, RBIs. So in baseball, an RBI is when a batter hits a ball and essentially a runner on the base scores to home plate. And uh, we'll throw that in here. So RBIs. And let's rewrite these over here. Now I'm going to go for essentially a one correlation. That is not realistic in baseball. But for this video, that's what I wanted to do. So we're going to have RBIs like that. And awesome. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rank each of our hits and then each of our RBIs. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say hits rank equals stats dot rank data and then pass in this hits array so we'll pass in this now we have our hits ranks okay and if we wanted to print this out so print you can see that these are now mapped right so two four one five and three awesome and then what we're going to do next is we're going to have is our rbis rank so rbis rank equal stats dot rank data and then just pass in our rbis over here right and now all these will be mapped with ranks so we go over here uh, this rank you can see two four one five three great so now both of these are working properly what we're going to have to do now is find the difference right so let's say that is d over here we're going to say equals and we're gonna have our hits rank minus our RBI's rank, all right? And now let's find our N value, which is gonna be our length. So N equals and then length, and you can either pass in hits or RBI's, it's gonna be the same. I'm just gonna put in hits over here. So now we have that. Okay, and now that we have our length value and our D value, I want to square our D right now. So let's just say D squared squared equals D and we'll raise that to, to power. And now all we have to do is calculate everything with our formula. So Spearman rank manual equals. And remember, we're going to do one minus and just plug into the formula. So six times NP dot sum. We're going to sum D over here, or D squared, I should say, sorry, D squared. And then we're gonna divide by N times N squared, that's one. And we should have a value of one. So let's just print this out. You could have thrown your N squared out over here too. Let's make it a little yeah, we got a value of one manual calculation. It's actually not too bad, but we can make this way easier. So let's take a look at our second example. So example two, which is going to be our SciPy example and check this out, right? Okay. So this is all you have to do for the SciPy side of things. So what we're going to say is Spearman rank SciPy. We also get our p value, but this isn't a video on p values. And we're going to say this equals to stats.spearman r, and then put in over here hits and RBIs. All right. That ran super, super fast. And then prints this out of our Spearman rank SciPy. And check this out. We get essentially one, right? 0 0.999999. And uh, we can go manual, do all this work, or literally one line of code with SciPy, and we get that example. Uh, I wanted to show you guys one more. So we're gonna say example three, and we're gonna look at ordinal data. So ordinal data over here. And I'm gonna change it up also. We're gonna use Python pandas for this side of things. So let's say our data equals, and we're gonna take a look at a classic example of hours studying and grades. So hours studied, 
and we're just creating a dictionary right now. So it'll say 10, let's see, 15, five and 18. And then what we're gonna have next is grades. So I'll have grades here, so grades. And then inside over here, let's pass in some grades. So C, we'll pass in A, pass in D, and we'll pass in B. And uh, I made this so we could have about a 0 0.8, I believe. So, okay, we have this over here. Now, what we can do is create a data frame based off of this dictionary. So df equals pd.dataframe, and then just pass in our data, right? We have that over here. And just to show you that this is working, we'll go over here to df.head, right? And you can see our study and then the grades associated with it. All right, so our next step is gonna be to map each of these grades to a number, right? So we're converting the grades to a, a numerical number. So let's do that right now. And that way we can apply our ranks to those. So we'll say grade mapping equals. And again, we're gonna have another dictionary over here, right? We had this data over here. This time we're gonna do uh, all of our grades. So we'll say A is gonna be equal to four. And then B is going to be three, then C is two, and then D is going to be our one, right? So we have our rankings over there for the grade mapping. Awesome. And then what we're going to do is DF and we'll say grades ordinal equals DF grades. And then you just do dot map, and then you pass in these grade mapping, right? And then just to show you what this looks like now, we can go over here and look at our data frame. And you can see our studied grades and then the grades over here, right? Two, four, one, three. And now we go through our process again. So we have to apply our ranks now, luckily in pandas, it's really, really easy to do this. So we're gonna have to do our ranks for hours and then also the grades. So all we're gonna do is DF over here and we'll say hours rank. And we're gonna say that is equal to DF hours studied dot rank, so dot rank like that, okay. All right, and now we just need to do this for our uh, grades ordinal now, since we did the hours. So we're gonna say hours rank. Instead of that, we're gonna just have our grades rank. So grades rank, and then just pass in our grades ordinal, right? So we have our studied rank, and we have our grades ordinal. Let me just make sure that's correct. Grades rank, good. All right, now we have both of those. Let's have our head again for our data frame. So that way we show everything else. So our studied grades, grades ordinal, hours rank, and then also our grades rank. Awesome. Now let's calculate our Spearman. So all we have to do is Spearman rank pandas equals, and we're gonna grab in our data frame. And inside over here, we're gonna grab two columns. So we're gonna have our hours rank. And it all completed at first, but it did not the second time. Just grab our hours rank. And then also we're gonna have our grades rank. So we'll pass in our grades rank. Let's say dot core, or we'll say method equals Spearman. Then I lock zero one. All right, and lastly, Let's print this out. Zero point eight on the dot. So just to kind of recap, right? We went through three different ways to calculating the Spearman's rank on here. So the first way we did it is a manual calculation. We had two different arrays. We ranked each of these arrays over here. And then we went through the formula, find the difference. We find the N square D, plug everything into the calculation, which we went over in the slides. And then we find that. The second way, easiest way, sci-fi, right? All we use stats at Spearman, we pass in both of those arrays, we get our answer.
Uh, third way, we took a look at Python pandas, just create a dictionary here. Then what I did is create a data frame based around it. We looked at ordinal data. So I changed these grades into numbers, right? And I did that through grade mapping over here, right? A4, B3, C2. Uh, so now we have numbers associated with those. Then I found the ranks of the hours studied and then these new mapped grades, right? And then lastly, all we had to do is find the correlation and you can specify the method being Spearman and we got 0 0.8 for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on the Spearman's rank correlation. And if you found some value to it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. One of our goals is to reach 100,000 subscribers in 2025. And we're trying to publish at least three to four videos every single week. Now, if you want to learn even more about statistics with the help of Python, I've linked a few videos down below in the description that I think you should check out next, as well as a playlist right over 